Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome to the channel. Today I'll be showing you how to build a fully adjustable DIY rod holder with cup holders using parts from your local hardware store. First let me show you how it works, then I'll show you how to build it. Okay. Alright, now I'd like to show you how to drive the rod holder into the ground. It's got this ground spike here, which you just put wherever you'd like. And then put all your weight on the top. Now I'd like to talk about adjusting the angle of the rod holders. And the way you're going to do that is by adjusting the eye bolts. Loosen the eye bolts and set the rod holders to whichever angle you'd like. And then when you've got it where you want it, you can tighten the eye bolts again. If you're just fishing for, you know, little hatchery trout and things like that. But if you're going to be targeting bigger fish, make the eye bolts finger tight and then take a pair of needle nose pliers. Everybody should have these with them and torque them down two more turns or until you can't turn it anymore. And this will make those rod, those rod holders absolutely stiff and they're not going to be losing, you know, any friction there between the eye bolts and the spike T-nuts. Now I'm going to show you how to put the rods in the rod holder and secure them so they're not going to be taken by a fish or uh, fall out of the PVC pipe part here. Alright, so the way this works, you'll see at the end of the video when I show you how to build it, just pop it off, it's just held by a washer, put your rod in there, and this rod holder is meant for spinning rods, probably work for any rod, but uh, then you lash over the reel like that, hook it back on, and it's the same on the other side, just over the reel and put it on, and then your rods are locked and they're not going to get pulled out, so that's how you do that. All right, so the cup holders are a modular system. You can take off the cup holder extensions and turn them into uh, just So you can remove the cup holder extensions and then these cup holders just turn into these little shallow cups that you can hold gear and uh, miscellaneous terminal tackle items like some weights and things. So that's another item with uh, the way I built this, this rod holder. What are you doing? Oh, it's a pretty big one. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Look at that thing. <laughs> Don't get stabbed. That's a fat one. Holy cow. Holy cow. Does fish have any bones? Yeah, these ones have bones. I hope you saw that rod holder do good on that catfish. All right, now that you know how it works, I want to show you how to build it. You can press pause if you need to. So before we get started, these are the tools you're going to be using most likely about half an inch from this uh, end right here. I'm going to put a dot right over that little number. Uh, 
just like that. And the same on the other side. It'll be about half an inch if you buy a different type of PVC and they don't have this for you. After that, there's a there's this line here that's kind of barely visible. You can see it pretty good. I'm just going to go straight from that mark that I made and draw a line and try to stay half an inch away from the edge again. So let's do that. Let's do about half an inch, put, an, put another dot. Let's go a little bit above the line and that's a little off, but we'll just connect those two like that. It's not going to be perfect. Okay. And then you're going to do this mirror, mirror that with the other one. Come about a half an inch. Make a big dot up there above the line, just right above the line. And then connect the dots. It's okay to make a big messy line because you'll see the reasoning behind that. Okay, so those are done. You don't really need to do anything else with these unless you want to later on. And I'll talk about that. Now you're going to take the middle T and do your best to find the absolute center of the top here. You can use a finger and kind of feel for it and then put a dot right up there in about the center of that one and find your plug that little spot right there just color over that because we're going to drill through that so your part should look something like that when you're done and we are ready to move on for this next step you're going to use your drill and a half inch Forzner bit or any bit that will drill a hole like that and that'll be for this T right here and then on the plug you're just going to use just a drill bit and I'm matching the toggle bolt with that so they're about the same so I will go ahead and drill those two out and then we'll move on to the other parts all right, those two are punched out. Now we're gonna Dremel out these uh, these lines right here, and after that, we'll move on to the couplings. Okay, so these two parts right here, you Dremel those out. These are gonna be for your wing screws. This is all about uh, something I kind of wanted to, wanted to do myself. I didn't really see many other people doing it. But these are going to sit on the side of the apparatus and your wing screws are going to let you uh, tighten or loosen and you'll be able to adjust the height of the rods from straight up to uh, straight horizontal or anywhere in between. But those channels have to be wide enough so that your wing screws can slide. It's going to look like that on the device but not too wide so that the wing screw can't bite down when you're going to tighten that. So let's get our, our couplings in here if you guys can follow what I'm putting down. If you look on the inside, there is a lip right there. That's where it's going to stop. So I need to pound this coupling in. So what will end up happening is we'll have all these parts flush and connected together. We're going to drill a couple holes, put our wing screws in there, and then we'll have this action going on with our rod holders. So I'm just holding this sandpaper from this belt sander and basically doing this. And it's quite strenuous. Quite strenuous, but it's working. If I don't tear the paper up, and after a few minutes, we're really taking some material off of that. 
making it so this can actually start to kind of slide on there and not have so much stickiness to it. So if you follow that, actually what I did was I took the couplings, I got hot water from the faucet, I put some hand soap, just some soap inside there, put some hot water on the coupling, and then just pounded it in, and it went right in. So I'm gonna keep that up. You can see how we're loosening that up. And we're almost there for that. All right, this part, this module is complete. We've got the full range of motion in those rod holders on uh, both sides. They're looking good. I've put little red dots in the top. That's where the, uh, what are these called? Wing, wing screws will go. So I will now take my drill. And all right, this is a huge step. We've completed the head of the rod holder with cup holders. This can be put on any rod holder at this point. All right, I've split up this shim and I've whittled, whittled it down. So with a little bit of extra encouragement, It'll fit down in that steel tube. All right, got a hole drilled straight down there. A couple inches, three inches. That is ready to find itself buried inside the steel tube now. All right, essentially we've created um, threading in the top of this steel tube here. And we will take our plug, put it on there, and we're going to thread that until it catches on. And then we will take the side attachments off of this so we can kind of see what we're doing. We're gonna use this top hole and look in the sides and get these all connected together. All right, here goes nothing. We're just gonna take this module, set it on the toggle bolt, and check that we're in. And we are in. Now, we're just gonna take our screwdriver from the top and tighten that screw down until it is all tight. All right, we've got the whole head assembled to the stake. And there is a little bit of play underneath as was as is expected. So now I'm going to open up the steel stick and we are going to fill in one, two, three, all those little gaps. Basically anchor this stake into that one inch plug, and fill in all those gaps and eliminate that wiggle room. All right, I've got steel putty in place. I've also got holes drilled for the cup holders. I've also cut out these little shapes in the cup holder extensions, and I have cut an angle on the end there. All right, now that we've finished building this, I can't wait to get on the water and try it out. I'm excited for the cup holders, and also the, uh, the head actually has a 360 degree rotation action. I'm excited to try all of that out too. Oh, it looks like the right rod's going off. Looks like we got something on. Oh, it's just a little guy. No, 
not the one we're looking for. That one's a little too small. Let's see if we can't catch something bigger than that. Got something pulling on that left rod. Now that more like it. That's what we want to see. That's a proper catfish. I'd say the rod holder works pretty well. All right, having tested this rod holder, I did uh, come back and make three changes. Um, there were there were no changes made to the cup holders or the the ground stake. Um, just three changes made to the head here, and the first being the use of eye bolts instead of uh, wing screws with uh, spiked T-nuts and there's also some interior components with this with this setup too that I'll explain everything in detail that's the first um, change that I made and that that's because I believe you know the way I had built it initially was great for you know the most of the fish that you'll see in like a lot of urban ponds and lakes and things like little trout and smaller fish but if you were to catch start catching um bigger fish like you know five five ten fifteen pounds uh, i just was looking for a way to beef up that that same system so that's the eye bolts and i'll show you that um secondly uh, these two little wood screws my goal was to uh, not use any PVC glue. And so instead of gluing those, those uh, couplings in place, these wood screws are just, you know, just really short, just long enough to punch through this uh, T connector and into the couplings. So there's no shifting or twisting. And also this this whole side couldn't just come undone because it's anchored there and it's anchored here and lastly is the use of uh, paracord inside this vinyl hose for locking your rods in after you put your rods in the rod holder uh, locking those rods in place and um, that way you can turn your back on your rods and you know a fish is not going to steal your rod out of the rod holder it's not it's not like you don't have to do that but i definitely wanted that feature to be on this rod holder and it's a really simple uh, module and i'll show you how to build that but basically you would take the uh the washer off and there's another one of those little wood screws just on the sides here and then it just comes off and then you can hook it back on and it's pretty quick and i'll go into more detail about all of this all those three mods here now all right i'm going to show you the whole thing i've done with the eye bolts and it's the same on both sides so i'm just going to show you one side but um First, you're gonna undo the harness and just completely take the eye bolt out. And you'll see that I, um, I've got an, I've got a spiked T nut there on the uh, on the top. The only difference is 
I took a pair of needle nose pliers and I um, and I just broke off those prongs because I think it looks good and uh, it works good too. So first you're going to need to make two of those. And these are just like quarter inch, three inch eye bolts, not, not nothing too huge. And then you'll see in there is the eye bolt or is the spiked T nut upside down. And when you're taking this off, you need to um, push that down a little bit because when you tighten it, it pulls it up. And then what I've got in here is a Jenga block. You can use any scrap of wood, but I just drilled a hole through a Jenga block. This is one inch. And then I just cut it in half. That's why you see the Jenga blocks there. I use any scrap of wood, but this is alder. This is a hardwood. And then here is another spiked T-nut. And the way I punched it out was first I made that hole a little bit wider so it would fit. And then I set it on top and I took a hammer and hammered down until it set some, uh, some imprints there four little prick marks and then I marked those with a marker and that's how I knew how to drill my holes. Um, these holes will be drilled with a little drill bit just like this. It's going to let you fit your spiked T-nut the way I want to show you. And then that goes up inside and just fits in the um, same holes that you've drilled from the top. And you take your block and the block is just there so that the, the uh, spiked T-nut doesn't fall down. And then you set it right underneath. Take this module again. And you shouldn't ever have to open this part up. Once it's assembled, you shouldn't ever have to open it up. But um, that's just how I built it. And then you make sure that the... Uh, piece of wood down there the hole is lined up with that hole and just put this back down in there and that just creates a, a much more secure thread because you've actually got real threading So that is how you do that. Before I get ahead of myself, this is 5 16 inch internal diameter vinyl hose. Very, very cheap, like most of the materials. Just wanted to make sure that that was clear. These washers are about the size of a nickel. They're a little bit larger than a nickel. Uh, make sure that you get the ones with the wide hole in the middle and so that way you can hook it onto your device and it will grab onto that screw like so. All right, so these are pretty cool. The vinyl hose is just to protect the paracord, but it's basically like a stethoscope kind of contraption and the quickest way to do it is to just you know cut your pieces of hose and it doesn't have to be like the same size like if you want um on your on yours it you know the sizes to be a little different you can but whatever you uh whatever you do 
make sure that when it hooks on to um, to that little wood screw that it is really tight so the way I do it is I hook it on and then I push it over the top and it's super tight so that when that fishing pole is in there like you'll see is absolutely not coming out so make sure that you've done it that way but other than that it's just uh I use this this stuff it's like a little bit thicker than the um, normal paracord but like you can see you're just gonna get the length of it you know pass it through a washer feed it through some uh, hose and you can you can fish it through with like fishing line like grab one end and and then tie it you know that's what I did I tie some fishing line to the two ends and then I pulled it through but that's basically that one and uh, you do want to burn your your ends so you're not fraying and things like that <laughs> 